Okay, so what's the next stage of the design? Um, the first page that you're going to put into your folder is going to look like the one that's on the screen now. Basically, you've got three boxes that you just draw in. Uh, make sure they're all linked up around the border. It's in line, remember attention to detail. The first box here will have your cardboard modeling. The second one there will have the computer generated modeling. The third one here might have another product or a side view. But the main big picture there will be where your final making is inserted into the folder. So when you get towards the end of the uh, course, it's important that we've got everything completed because we can't send the folder off obviously without this picture of the final design sitting on the front of the cover. So it's all got to be completed together. Okay, so that's your first page. Your second page is very straightforward. Your second page is your contents page. If I just zoom in, so you can see I've changed my logo slightly, um, or should I say title bar slightly. And that's basically going to be how I'm going to use that right the way throughout the folder. So it will be consistent. The fonts will all be the same throughout. Do not change the font as you go through. And then the next stage is going to be the content. Literally with the contents, leave the page numbers off, but list what you put on each page because that will actually help you form your Gantt chart or your production planning as you're actually doing this work as well. Okay, so what do we find on the first page? Well, the first page is the most important page because it sets the design situation, the design brief, and starts breaking the problem down for the examiner to see. If it's not in there, um, he's got nothing to actually moderate against. So the outcome has to fit in with what we're writing here. So design situation, design brief, task analysis, task analysis answers. However you wish to set it out, that's one um, version of it. If you look on the second page that I've done, you can see I've actually put them into certain sections. And whichever way you actually put the titles on, it doesn't really make no difference as long as you continue to do it right the way through the actual folder. Okay, then let's move on. So the first thing um, that I asked uh, people to look at was the actual web page for the exam board. Okay, so there we go. Now if you remember, it's AQA. Type that in. When it comes up to home, you click on to um, DT. So if I just show you again, home set qualification is GCSE. From GCSE, specification is DT graphic products. Once it clicks onto graphic products, key materials. You then click on to specification and yours is for the exams for 2004. Okay, once you've opened that up then, what you will find is that you should have, let me just um, see if we can drag this one across, there we go, is you should have this. Now the exam board goes right the way through what you need to learn, etc. But the page that you're looking at is where it starts to look at unit 2, which is controlled assessment. You please notice at this point, as mentioned, the making is only one third or just over of the marks for your product. It's out of 90, the making is 32. Therefore, the other 60 marks comes from the folder. So in some ways, the folder is more important than the actual outcome of the making. Very important to understand that. It's not just about the making. And especially as yours is a graphics folder, the graphical element of your folder is also quite important at that point. Okay, so let's move uh, down the page to look at the first bit, which is criterion one. Now this is out of eight marks, and this is the most important part in some ways because it sets out what your folder is going to be. To get to the top marks, you've got to include everything underneath. So to get a C or above, which is where we're looking at, we need to be looking at five or six, or seven or eight for the first section at least. So, you can see it's got here good understanding analysis of design context, analysis of relevant products and systems undertaken. That's what we're going to be looking at putting into the first part of our folders. At the top, discrimination shown when selecting and acquiring relevant information that will promote originality in designing and excellent understanding and analysis of the design context. Detailed analysis of the relevant existing products and systems undertaken in a design intentions. What I'm going to show you hopefully is going to fit into these areas and as long as you've got this in your folder you then have to look at the quality of it. But do bear in mind, discrimination when selecting and acquiring relevant research will come from how well you actually analyse the product. The task analysis will lead you into what you need to research. The understanding of the analysis therefore is quite critical because it's you understanding the situation so therefore the actual problem has to be important and it has to be relevant to start off with. If the problem you are solving is poor, then the outcome will be poor. Okay, let's see where we're going from here then. 
Okay, so a design situation. What is a design situation? Literally, it is the problem in a nutshell. Um, you can see the sort of things that I'd like you to include. I've put this in the blue background, which stops you copying and pasting and editing from videos. Um, you need to put this into your own words, really, but there are certain things or certain frameworks that you need to include. So what I've got here is um, you need to attempt to solve the problem, to identify clearly what the problem is and explain why you think the problem needs to be solved in the first place. If you can't tell me why you need to solve that problem, then it's not going to get you a good grade. If you can't justify anything on the pages and you don't know why you've put it in your folder, then it doesn't need to be in your folder, is what I'm saying. If you can't use it, it shouldn't be in there. That's the situation anyway. The design problem is normally a paragraph or two in length. It states the problem that you're trying to solve. You only need to state the problem and how you will solve it briefly. That's why it's called the design brief that follows on from here. And the specification will look at the specifics. So just keep it at this point. Although you've got a clear idea of what it is you're going to do as a product, what it is you're going to do as an outcome, we need to, at this stage, sort of pretend in some ways or go back to the stage where we've got to the write-up where we're starting to look at the problems initially. The first sentence of the situation of the problem needs to actually start by I've been approached by a client because therefore you're making it justif justifying why you're doing it because it's got a real life scenario. If it's a real life scenario it's actually got more value. So the information about the user and the specific problem in hand. What have we got to do about it? Who wants us to solve it? Specifics like the age, disabilities, gender, race, you can add them into them, but try to keep it as brief as you can. We're not at the moment trying to develop the idea. That's something that comes a bit later on. Okay, so what do we do as a sort of design situation? Well, I've clicked on it and done a sample of one, and this is my design situation. Now, the problem I'm looking at is designing a shop and memorabilia. Okay, so mine reads, um, I've been approached by a local client who has secured funding to start up his own shop which specialises in merchandise of games and memorabilia. First thing that I've got wrong here, as I've gone through, which I've put in, is I've already identified that it's going to be a male that's actually going to be the client. At this point, try and keep it general and we try to make it so there's no boundaries, so we're not actually discriminated against. So the best way to have put that is secured funding to start up. And if I actually make it and put in there, their own shop, which specialises in merchandise of games and memorabilia. So it's kept, so it's not specific. And then as I read through, you'll see that that follows through throughout the paragraph. At the moment, the client has no corporate identity and is currently looking at a local property in County Town Centre. Right, so I know I've got to create a corporate identity. I haven't explained what's in the corporate identity yet. And I know that it's to do with something that's local in County Town Centre. Now, I know that there's loads of shops that unfortunately have closed down and loads of shops that are vacant. So all I need to do is go and get a photograph of it. And then I've started to make a real life product, a real life scenario and that's what's going to get me my A stars and A's. The corporate identity needs to represent the client, their aims, the products and the quality. So to understand the client, what I'll need to do is do some sort of a client profile. So already I'm starting to put into place what I need to research, which is what makes it uh, an A star sort of product as well. Their aims, what are they after from it? The products and the quality. What are we going to sell? What sort of quality is it going to look at? What sort of cost are we looking at? Before investing, the client wants to visually see what a new corporate identity will need and what the shop, etc., would look like before commissioning the design. Exactly what you would find in industry. When you type, can you make sure as well that everything is not in this sort of one down here, where it's to the left, the line to the left, certainly not in the center, and you need to make sure that it's all justified. And that way, it puts it in a nice little block. We don't have any font that's bigger than 12 in the main body. The reason being is when we print, um, we need to look at printing onto A3, and 12 is quite big. So you can see, although some people write something like this, so it's massive, so it looks like they've filled the actual screen, in fact, there's nothing on there at all. I can fit that into an area that's that big. And that then, Ctrl-C, will go straight in 
to where my design situation is and I'll actually place that into the area so it all fits in. I'll then move my design brief a bit further there. It would help if I press the right button. And we start to fill the page up. So that's literally the design situation. That's stage one. The next stage will be to show you what's in the design brief. So once you've wrote your situation, insert it straight into that area.